Lord, we ask that you go for tonight. I ask that you would uh, just prepare our hearts for what you have for us, Lord. I ask that you would uh, touch us, Lord. Touch us in the, the areas of our hearts that we've holding back from you, Lord. I ask that you would uh, do that work in them, Lord. I ask that you would reveal those areas that are hidden from us that you see, Lord, that we'd be able to have our eyes open in those areas. As we've seen in chapter 5, Belsajar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, was killed after defiling the instruments of the Lord's temple. It was around 16, 600 to 539 B.C. Darius, being about 62, conquered Babylon by diverting the waters of the Euphrates from the city and entering through the riverbed, conquering a city that was said to be unconquerable at that time. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdoms 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors, one of whom Daniel was one that the satrap might give account to, <clears throat> account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to set him over the whole realm and keeping in mind that Darius had just taken Babylon and with him men fighting not only for the land but the power within a position of power in the newly won kingdom Daniel distinguished himself above all why? because he had an excellent spirit about him and Darius seen this and Daniel, as you can imagine, it did not make Daniel too popular with the people that just fought to take the city. And in their minds, earning the right for a position, a title. But instead, it is given to a slave, a newly conquered slave. Not, not a slave that was with them, but a newly conquered one. Micah 6.8 he has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your Lord. When we stand for the Lord, what are our motives? Daniel's motives were pure. Are we loving? Are we merciful? Are we humble? The real question is, why are we doing it? For our own selfish desires? To glorify the Lord? The condition of your heart? What is the condition of your heart? The condition of Daniel's heart was to serve the Lord continuously. The time, from the time he was a boy and wouldn't defile himself by eating the king's meat till now, till his old age. Timothy 1 5. Now, propose of the, com the purpose of the commandments is love from a pure heart, from a good count countenance from a sincere faith. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. 1 Peter 2, 12 and 13. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, evil doers, they may by your good works, which they oversee, glorify the Lord in the day of visitation. Therefore submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme. Daniel submitted to the new king. And in doing this, he brought honor to God. The, and the king was blessed because God blessed Daniel. I believe Daniel's heart condition is why the Lord could use him mightily. And in this, I do not mean you cannot be used if your heart is not right, your motives are not pure. God can still use you. But to what extent can he use you? Can he use a heart that is not fully given to him? I propose that your heart can be as pure as you want it. If you seek him, they say, if you have as you can have as much as the Lord as you want, if you seek him, 
I believe the same is for your heart condition. If you seek Him, your heart can be as pure as you want it to be. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, administrators and satraps and counselors and advisors have consulted together and established a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. This decree was prepared. The king did not write it himself. They brought it before him and coerced him to write, to sign it. Already prepped out, already written. All he had to do was put his signature there. Whether they did this in front of the party or in front of people to where he could not say no is not said. Not all of them. Not Daniel. He did not take part in this conniving, this gossip, this backbiting, all the things that one would think would get you ahead in the world. Daniel put his trust in the Lord to fight his battles. As the decree, as as the as for the decree, it was binding. Not even the king could change it. As set, They set a trap for the king, and he fell for it. Whether it was his pride or his arrogance, it doesn't matter. He could not change it. Now when Daniel knew what the... Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before the Lord, before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God since his early days, since, his, since he was a child from captive, He's relied on the Lord. Daniel had the king's ear. He was his right-hand man, yet he ran to the Lord. Where do we run when the attack comes? Is it to the Lord, or is it to our own worldly pleasures, or is it, or is it to trust in our own power to fix it? Not only did Daniel run to the Lord, he thanked him. He kept his eyes on the Lord. He put his fears and doubts that were in his heart in check and put his focus on the Lord and made supplication to the Lord. Supplication comes from the Latin sub, supply cave, which means to plead humbly. Daniel humbled himself before the Lord and made his petition to the Lord, not to the king. Second Chronicles 6, 37-39 Yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done wrong, and have committed wickedness. And when they re return to you with all their hearts and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive, and pray towards their land which you have given to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and towards the temple which I have built for you, for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayers and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. That's what Daniel was doing. He was praying towards the holy city. He was pleading to the Lord. First King eight twenty eight thirty. You regard. Yet regard the prayers of your servant and his supplication, O Lord, my God, and listen to the cry of the prayers which your servant is praying before you today, that your eyes may be opened towards the temple night and day, towards the place which your, you said my name shall be there, that you may hear and pray the prayers which your servants make towards this place, and may you hear the supplication of your servants and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place here in heaven, your dwelling place, 
And when you hear, forgive, are you making your supplication? Are you putting your worries at the Lord's feet? Are you praying towards Him? Or are you putting your worries or your trust in your own your own abilities to get out of the certain situation. Daniel did just that. He repented. He made his supplications to God three times a day towards the holy city. He was a captive in Babylon, but his heart belonged to the Lord. Who does your heart belong to? Does it belong to the world, to your desires, to the things that entice you? Or does it belong to the Lord? And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said, Before the king, that Daniel, who is one of the captives of Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. They went before the king. And they reminded him of the decree that he signed. Not the decree that he, writ, that he wrote, but the one that he signed, the one that they prepared the plot for and said, for 30 days, man, what a burden that would be to have no, no one else to solve the issues but yourself. That, that right there is very interesting that the king agreed to that. Darius, knowing he messed up, whether it was his pride or being rash, he sought to free Daniel because he was his friend or out of fear of material loss. He tried until the going down of the sun. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and the Persians that no decree or statue with the, which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the commandment and they brought Daniel to cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. They came and told the man that could put them to death, Remember what you said. Called him to the plate. That, that, that is pretty bold. Now, whom you, can, whom you serve continually, think about that. Can that be said about you? I know I fall short, but how fast do we get right with God? Are we like Daniel? Do we repent right away? Do we stay in that sin for a while and enjoy it? Do we let our hearts get defiled? Psalms 45, 7. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, therefore God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Psalm 97:10. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the soul of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of wickedness. Do we? Do we hate evil? Amos 5.15 Hate evil, love God, establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Judah. Do we? Do we hate evil? Do we hate evil? Do we love our good, good father? Hosea, when the Lord begins to speak to Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take yourself a wife of harlotry and, chil and children of harlotry, for the land has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. The Lord is talking about Israel leaving him and playing the harlot. A marriage of a husband and a wife is a beautiful thing. When kept pure, do you think you would defile your marriage with sin? No, because of the love you have for your wife, for the for your kids, for the consequences that would come 
upon them. But why do we play the harlot to the Lord? If we are the bride of Christ, why do we not purpose in our hearts to love the Lord more than our sin? Why do we defile the marriage between us and Christ? Daniel did not defile that marriage. I believe this is why the Lord loved Daniel so. Daniel 10, 11. And he said to me, O oh Dan, oh Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking these words to me, I stood trembling. He said to me, Daniel, man greatly beloved, examine your hearts, examine the condition, what we truly love. I want to be called greatly beloved by God. I want my heart condition to be like Daniel's heart condition, to not waver, to not even dabble in sin, to not have a doubt where it lies. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet, signet of his lord that the, the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his place and spent the night fasting. No, no musicians were brought before him. Also he slept. The, his slept went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? This places doubt in my mind that the king was saved. The, he says, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continuously, been able to deliver you from the lions? He ran early in the morning. If there was no doubt in his heart, he would not have been rushing there. He would have known that the Lord saved him. This does not sound like a man thinking of his riches. No, this sounds like a man thinking of a friend, a mentor, a loved one. When looking back at verse 10 and 11, I think Daniel could have petitioned the king and the, the king may have got and may have gotten the king to make a new decree but he ran to God God got the glory Darius the king will even praise the Lord Then Daniel said to the king O king live forever my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that I have not so that no, so that they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Are we found innocent before the Lord? We see here Daniel is innocent. Innocent of what? He did not stop serving the Lord. He did not play the harlot. We see here he did, no, he did not wrong the king who the Lord had put over him. He served him faithfully. Exodus 34, 15. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and they play the harlot with their gods and make sacrifice to their gods and one of them invites you to eat his sacrifice. Daniel was not eating the meat of the sacrifice to the idols. Daniel purposed in his heart to keep himself pure in every aspect of his life. Whether it being faithful to the king and doing the things that were right. Daniel's heart was set on the Lord from a child to an old man. His love for the Lord did not waver, nor did his faith in the Lord. Then the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the lion's den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed in his God. Because he believed in his God. Think about that. No injury was found because he believed, because his heart condition. How big is your God? What will you place in his hands? What is your lion's den? 
Will you try to, try to solve it yourself? Don't hold back. Give all your troubles to the Lord. Most of all, give your heart to the Lord. The areas that you hold tight to, the doors of your heart that you don't open to him, surrender your heart to him. Keep in mind, Daniel was about 80 to 85 when he was tossed into the lion's den and pulled out without a scratch. That in itself is a miracle, to survive the drop to the floor of the lion's den and not to get a broken leg or a scratch and the lion's not touching him. That's just the obvious miracle. And the king gave the commandment, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, and, their, and the lions overpowered them and broke all of their bones to pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Think about that. Your sin does not just affect you. It affects the people around you, your family members, your children. Sin has that ripple effect that we all see. The king, Then King Darius wrote to all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the Lord of Dan, before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. This here, Darius is praising the Lord, giving the glory to the Lord, because Daniel's heart was in the right place. And the king seen this, that good spirit that was about him, the mentor, for he was older than the king. I'm sure the king went to him and asked him for the advice, and it wasn't the advice that came from Daniel, but the advice that would come from the Lord. His kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the region of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. There is no way to get rid of this kind of decree. The only way to counteract a decree was to make a new one. Like we've seen in Esther, the king made a new decree to supersede the old decree. And in this new decree that was written, the whole earth was to tremble and fear the God of Daniel. Then he goes on to praise the God of Daniel. That would be like Trump going before the UN and telling the nations, the people, all the other religions, that they must praise the Lord God, the God of the Jews. Think about what honor Daniel brought to the Lord by playing, by not playing the harlot with God, but by loving him more than anything, even his own life. Psalms 143.10 Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Teach me to do your will. Are you getting into the word? Are you being taught by the Lord to do his will? For you are my God. Is he your God? Or is the God of this world, the God of the material possessions, of the sin, of the TV, of the things that come in and we dwell within our heart. Are those your God? Your spirit is good. Leave me in the land of uprightness. Is that the land that we look for? Are we looking for the land of uprightness or are we looking for the land of pleasure? Is this your heart's desire for your will to be the Lord's will? Deuteronomy 6, 5, 6. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and these words which I command you today shall be, shall be in your heart. Are they in your heart? What is your heart conditions? Do we love him with all our heart? Daniel did, and he was used mightily by the Lord. How much do you want to be used by the Lord? How much do you want your heart changed? How much of the Lord do you want? Will you play the harlot? Or will you serve the Lord? 
Unlike Jim, I don't run long. I run short. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the night. Thank you for the message, Lord. Ask that you would help us to examine our hearts, Lord. That we would take those areas of our hearts that we're holding on to, that we are playing the harlot with you, that we would cast them aside, and that our true ambition, our true desire would be to seek after you, Lord. Ask that you would do that work in us, Lord. That we'd be able to glorify you in all of our actions and bring the honor to you through the Gentiles that see us, Lord. Ask that you would just bless us in that. In Jesus' name, amen.